There we go. Steady. <laughs> Easy does it. <laughs> We're in Laura's car. Whenever we do that, we got a, we got the camera sitting on a couple of a couple of VHS tapes and an empty thing of dentine fire because that the, the dashboard the whole sits. The dash is just sloped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just. I grabbed two movies right off my shelf. It's Mad Max and Crocodile Dundee. Which I assume that you just keep in the car in case of a rainy day. <laughs> I need the two most beloved Australians in my car. <laughs> I don't really think Paul Hogan's that beloved down there. <laughs> From what I heard, he's kind of a douche. <laughs> but come on, man. He was, um... What's that fucking cowboy movie he did? <laughs> The one with the uh, the Cherokee Cuba Gooding kid? No, no, that was Sinbad. Uh, I can't believe I remember that, but I don't remember uh, <laughs> Lightning Jack. Was that it? That sounds right. The fucking like with Cuba Gooding Jr. as a mute. Yeah. <laughs> oh, anyway, so here's our review of Lightning <laughs> Jack. Tune in next week. We'll review Reckless Kelly. Ooh. <laughs> isn't it fun? We just got out of Personal Shopper. and Isn't it fun reviewing a movie on the day that it leaves theaters? <laughs> really catching it at that sweet spot where it's on the it's on everybody's mind. Well, I, a movie that we had never heard of in Sondo trailers. No, I, I, was, uh, I was looking for something to go see today because... Um, Irving is working tonight, so Friday night he and I are seeing Smurfs, and then Saturday Dave and I are at Case for Christ, and going in style is out this weekend, but Sarah and I caught the advanced screening of that like a, a couple of weeks ago. You know, I saw a trailer the other day that said it's looking to be one of the best films of 2017. Going in style? Yes. I, have... I, I, I liked the movie, but it's not going to make my <laughs> best of the year list. I have to think that that was a very pandering review, so that's why they put it in the uh, the trailer. <laughs> I mean, it'll be one of the best movies of the year that you take your dad to. Like, I mean, <laughs> I mean you know what? Uh, that, it, it is a pretty funny movie, honestly. Um, this one, though, so far this year, actually, I... In my opinion, anyway, this this I think it might be one of the better movies I've seen so far this year. Yeah, I <laughs> I really enjoyed it. So did I immensely. Not all the time did I fully feel like I was getting what was happening. Mm -hmm. But I still really enjoyed what it was doing. I, I We both went into this pretty cold. Like, I, all I knew about... I, I haven't seen anything else that the, the writer and director has done. Uh, I, all I, I, we, we never saw a trailer for this. Uh, which which we typically don't for, like, the, the like indie flicks that go to, to Parkway. Um, but... Uh, but even then, like, like, just not even, like... Ha like haven't even heard of it. Like, like, like. Oh yeah, there's this one that I'm gonna like try to keep an eye out for. Personal there, shopper. Like, just never fucking heard of it till like. There was one part just the other day when, when I asked you when you're like, oh, you want to go see Personal Shopper tomorrow? I was like, <laughs> sure. Like in my head, I'm like, is that like a Melissa McCarthy thing? Like I don't. It sounds like the title of a movie she'd be in. <laughs> Is that a Melissa McCarthy thing? Oh, oh shit, sorry, I, I, I meant to text Irving. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Wrong Brian, asshole. <laughs> you son of a bitch, you really should have it separated in your fucking <laughs> phone, asshole. <laughs> I, I caught, there was one person in the comments who uh, asked if we were going to see this. and um, <laughs> The director. That'd be right, that'd be funny. Um, the... <laughs> <laughs> that just reminds <laughs> one of the animators of Boss Baby left us a comment on that review and just said because I actually kind of enjoyed that movie which no one believed because we reviewed it on April Fool's Day I actually kind of enjoyed that movie and one of the animators was like finally someone gets it <laughs> like, I, love, I can die happy and vindicated <laughs> exactly I love it when that happens um, I only knew of just kind of like the brief like one sentence synopsis of this uh, on IMDb be, but I had heard some decent things about it. Like I didn't hear it was a bad film by any means. I actually heard this was a pretty good movie, but I didn't I didn't go out and see any trailers or anything like that. And um it's uh it's it's a good ride. This movie is a really, really good ride. Like it uh Kristen Stewart stars in the film as a 
she's a medium, but she lives in Europe, so she works as a personal shopper. And the reason why she's there is because she had a twin brother who died of a heart attack, and both of them were mediums. And uh, she's there because he they had told themselves that if one of them were to pass on, the other one would, in the afterlife, leave the other a sign. And that's kind of what Kristen Stewart's doing there. She's going to a few different places where he'd been to try to to try to see if there's just any, he, she, if her dead brother is going to leave her any kind of sign that he's roaming around in the spirit world. And <clears throat> and I like the the fact that like everything you just described uh-huh. is explained to us uh, through seeing it and not being told anything about it over the course of like the first forty minutes. Yeah, it it really it. Unless he, I don't know what the trailers for this movie are like, but I'm kind of curious now just to see how it sells it based kinda, on what we just saw. Yeah, uh, because it it does give you this information piece by piece as like, the movie goes along in its it, hour and forty some minute running time. It, it it had especially there for me. I don't know if 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 it was for you as well, but during the the beginning part of the film. Um, Honestly, like the first maybe like 15, 20 minutes Mm -hmm. where it's just really, really long, uh, like single shots, like just tracking her like through this Mm -hmm. house that uh, eventually, I think that was her brother's house. Mm -hmm. And apparently his house is the house from fucking Crimson Peak. Like, I don't know. The place is fucking gigantic. Yeah. But, um, it's, it had like this really sort of like, like, 70s Italian horror giallo feel to it for me like like it honestly like it, it reminded me like a lot of the shots and like a lot of the just drawn out periods like no talking mm-hmm. uh, honestly no, no no soundtrack for a lot of the movie just yeah. just ambient sound uh-huh. like it really reminded me of some of the stuff like uh, like Inferno and stuff yeah. like that where mm-hmm. it's just you know you're just observing like it's less like you're watching the film and more like you're observing events as they happen sort of feel. I feel like whatever movie, uh, like the, the girl that, that Kristen Stewart works for Mm -hmm. Kira, who we learn nothing about except that she's a bitch. Mm -hmm. She's some like, like fashionista. She owns gorillas, I think. Yeah. Like just odd things about her. She, Mm -hmm. she's just like this very rich entitled, like 20 year old. Yeah. And I feel like whatever movie that that girl is in is probably, like, the actual, like, mm-hmm. Giallo film. <laughs> and we're just, like, we're right, like, a step away from it. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like, like, that's where we, like, we're we're following, instead of, like, the main character in one of these movies, like, an incidental character that pops up once or twice, but we're seeing her whole story play out instead. Uh-huh. Yeah, because Kristen Stewart's story gets involved with this fashion models which is really where like the like the giallo thriller aspect really kind of comes into this because it she starts getting these weird texts and at first you're not quite sure if it's like is this the ghost texting her as it goes along well, even when it's like, is is it the ghost that's texting her? It then almost turns into like this stalker thriller via text where you're not sure if it's the ghost stalking her. After a while, it becomes kind of apparent who it is. But there are things that happen along the way during this whole but, section of the movie. But yeah, there, there's that, an, enough different things going on that yeah. it's like, it's like, well, because yeah, I, I was right there with you. Like, it's like, she starts getting these weird texts like mm-hmm. the morning after like she actually like has like a run in with like this spirit or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, Oh, well, clearly that's what it is. Yeah. But then, yeah, like it starts building. It's like, like this is definitely like the weird, creepy, like German boyfriend. I feel like uh-huh. who man, he had fucking like, like, I'm the killer written all over him. <laughs> but again, like, a, a very much like, like, sort of like the sort of killer you'd have mm-hmm. in one of these Italian flicks. And 
yeah, I, I'm curious, like, what the fuck all was going on, like, in the rest of that? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, because since we're following Kristen Stewart and she's kind of as this whole text conversation is going on, which is quite a bit of the movie, and, and getting um, like. Like it's weird. Like I, I like the way that it's it starts off super creepy, and she's yeah. really weirded out by it. But then, about halfway through that whole plot line, like she starts getting just very comfortable with it, and just that's what just I enjoyed about it. that. That that's what I really enjoyed about that because a lot of the movie is devoted to that, and so you really it, because a lot of the movie is devoted to that. You you see the the gradual build up to her kind of having this false sense of security over this conversation. Yeah, you get it why she starts answering in the way that she does and sending yeah, him she, pictures. She really starts going like getting in on it. Mm-hmm. But then that whole time, like in the back of my head, like I'm just like, it's like, and then the fucking hard turn's gonna come. Like mm-hmm. something's gonna happen, and this is gonna take a fucking hard left. And, and it did, and it was something I didn't see coming. <laughs> like this movie straight up does turn into like a mystery thriller, involving a corpse and blood, and like it. It's a. I I I. In terms of who is texting her, that that's not hard to figure out. But the turns that it makes along the way. And even trying to even figure out how this movie's going to wrap itself up is not predictable. <laughs> no, in, in the slightest. Well, in in one of the, I think one of the best scenes as far as like building tension, like aside from like like those scenes, like mm-hmm. like when she's at her her brother's old house, when there's just legitimately like you know spooky shit happening in the house. Mm-hmm. Uh, the scene where. Uh, Kind of there towards uh, after after her employer gets killed, like whenever she's like skyping with her boyfriend, and yeah, is like oh shit, I should turn my phone back on, and just like that like like sequence of like oh, those God, text messages yeah. just rolling in, uh huh, just getting more and more threatening as they yeah. go, like like watching like the little like like oh this was sent an hour ago, this is sent fifty minutes ago, thirteen minutes ago, eight minutes ago two minutes ago it's like it's like it was an interesting way of like like it was a chase scene that didn't involve anyone moving yeah and it it built like that same Mm -hmm. sense of like tension Mm -hmm. as like when you're watching a fucking like like when you're watching like halloween or something like people are walking around and don't realize that like michael myers is right fucking behind them they may like they managed to work that same feeling of dread Mm mm-hmm into just like like watching text messages pop up on her fucking phone and I loved that like that was that I was did a too very well done scene that was suspenseful as fuck like that was that was so tense that I thought like is this gonna when she looks through the peephole I'm like is this gonna turn into that shot from like opera where the bullet just <laughs> goes right fucking through the thing like that was creepy as shit and there are really good little touches in this scenes of just sheer spookiness in scenes that you don't expect something like that's gonna happen. There's one part where, and this is, tw- and this is a part that's towards the end of the movie where she's just talking to a guy about her brother, uh, like just back and forth. And you think, okay, this is just kind of a quiet moment where they're just talking back and forth. And this scene ends with a fairly spooky shot of a goat just fucking walking in the background. <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> if for. for the first little bit, like it doesn't linger on it, uh-huh. and it's so in the like in the background, yeah. out of focus. But you can tell, like you can see stuff going on back there. It's like, it's like if because at first it's like, oh, it's probably homeboy. And I'm like, wait, no, wait, no, it's because he was wearing like a red flannel shirt, and this guy's wearing like a blue sweater or something. Mm-hmm. It looks like, and she's like, I, I like that touch. Like it, it's it's not the focus of the scene. It's not the yeah. focus of the shot. It's just background stuff that honestly mm-hmm. like until like that that glass just like is hanging there for a second and drops mm-hmm. like until that moment like I can I can totally see people seeing that scene and not actually even paying attention to what's going on back there yeah. until that happens yeah um and the, <laughs> the They'll jump like shit once <laughs> if they don't see that in the background. They're gonna jump like shit once that ends. But um, this movie is it takes a lot of talent as a director, a writer, and an editor to build up this much tension and entertainment out of a lot of out of a lot of scenes of just kind of texting back and forth. Yeah, and this movie 
wildly succeeded in that regard, where something like, um, uh, Unfriended didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and that's the thing is like with trying to convey a sense of dread and a sense of worry over text. Uh huh. It's it's not something that you can do very easily because it's there's not a lot to that medium. Like it's not like like you know like the 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 s- suspenseful phone calls and something like yeah uh like scream or. When you a stranger know, calls, exactly, or like people like leaving like like photos behind for people to find in other yeah. movies, like yeah. like it's nothing like that. It's just like you look down, it's like whoop, mm-hmm. like like I I like I'm at your building. It's like mm-hmm. like there's like there's no there's no impact to that, and somehow they managed to find a good way to frame that to where it could have that. A lot of that too has to do with the fact that. Kristen Stewart is phenomenal in this film. <laughs> yeah, I, I've I've had issues with her and stuff before, but mm-hmm. she she does like the whole like terrified rabbit thing pretty well. She where, is, like she she honestly seems like she's about to have like a fucking like nervous breakdown in this. Yeah, like, she's, <laughs> she's and I've I, I I do love her as an actress. Unfortunately, her most popular role is. <laughs> Um, a role that nobody could have played good. Yeah. <laughs> but outside of that, everything I've seen her in, I've absolutely loved her in. And I think she's one of the more fearless young actresses who's working today. And this movie goes right along with that. And if there is any positive side when an actor maybe gets known for something like like Twilight, in the case of her and Robert Pattinson... Actors like that, typically, once that's all done, typically really do go out and try to find... Yeah, and and, the, and, and now to, like, push the envelope. Now yeah. To like, it's like, take all those chances to, like, shake off this image. Because uh-huh. well, shit like uh, uh, Daniel Radcliffe, you know, like, it's like, oh, yeah. finally done with all these Harry Potter movies. Now I'm going to go do, like, this you know, like stage play for two years yeah. where I'm just walking around with my dick out all the time. <laughs> yeah. And you know, yeah, between that and Robert Pattinson and doing the Cronenberg movies or hell, even like, uh, Shia LaBeouf after the Transformers movies and Crystal Skull doing like Nymphomaniac and shit like that. Yeah. Um, it's interesting to see where a lot of these actors kind of take their careers after that. And some do it well and some don't. And Kristen Stewart's one that, I've found immensely entertaining in her movies that she's done since then. She's fantastic in this film. Yeah, no, she she does a, a fucking perfect job. Because, yeah, it, it... Almost the whole movie centers around, like... I mean, basically just her, like, center frame mm-hmm. big as life. Like, mm-hmm. like she's she's in almost every single shot of the film yeah. practically mm-hmm. uh that the entire movie at that point rides on on her performance like if if yeah if she if she had played that if she had played that like <clears throat> well honestly like like her character from like twilight sure it this wouldn't have worked mm-hmm. and so i think that really speaks volumes that you know in the short period since then, like, well, like it's really it's, being able, I mean, granted, like part of that's the writing, part of that's the directing well, style but, as well. Part but, of that's also the fact that one project, an actor gives a shit about it. And the other one, they don't, <laughs> the other yeah, one they, could, and, they could give a rat's ass, you know? And yeah, I, I definitely feel like with those, it was like the paychecks there. I'm going to keep doing them. But like this one here, like I can't assume that she made, anything worth her time to do it Mm -hmm. but it it, you could tell from the amount of like you know the the amount of effort put in on it that this was something that she probably felt actually like impassioned about doing well you can tell that in her performance in this film there's a lot of sequences in this movie where she has to act with no lines or if there are lines just like one or two and most of it's just her reaction her emotions that can go from confused to scared to sad within a single scene. And she pulls all of that off, like, flawlessly in this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is it is an absolutely fearless performance. <laughs> Between 
the wild range of emotion she goes through in this film. And also the fact she's got a... <laughs> she doesn't have a no-nudity clause. <laughs> <laughs> no, that comes up a few times. I, I think that's why, uh, like, going into the theater, uh, we actually got carded. We did. <laughs> which I can't even remember the last fucking time I got carded going into a film. I don't re I, I well, I, I do for me. Like, it was at that last Underworld movie Sarah and I were at, I got carded. I don't remember... <laughs> a lot of nudity in that one, too? Uh... Maybe? <laughs> I, I can't remember. Dude, There's werewolf was, balls everywhere. It was Underworld. I napped during that shit. <laughs> like, I did all five of those fucking movies. Uh, like, uh, But I've never been to where they needed to also card the person I was with. The way that I always understood it, at least this was the case back when I was a kid, was yeah. only the person who was buying the tickets had to be 17 or older. Yeah, because the... The girl with the register who looked like... She was, like, 13. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna... <laughs> looked like teenage, like, Kate Micucci. Uh, was like, oh, I need to see your ID. Uh -huh. And then it leaned around you, like, both of your IDs. I was like, oh, shit. Okay, sorry, I wasn't trying to, like... <laughs> Are we going to a movie or buying booze? <laughs> Speaking of, like, there was... There was a... <laughs> There was a scattering of a few people in there. There was like a guy in the back who was just reading a book when we walked in. There was a couple there were there were a couple people just kind of scattered throughout there. And then there was this girl who was just by herself. She was sitting a few rows in front of us. And when the movie ended, <laughs> we got up and we just hear like clink 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 clink, 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 clink in front of us. She's like, shit. Looks back at us and we're just smiling. It's like, like yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> What's what I really like sneak booze into bad movies, though, not ones that... Yeah, not ones that don't need booze to see. <laughs> um, I feel like this would have been harder to see drunk. Yeah, it would have been very confusing. <laughs> um, also, what I like about seeing movies like this is we get trailers for movies that we've never gotten trailers for. And you we'll know. probably never get here. <laughs> yeah, the only one that maybe... Uh, maybe Colossal... Which actually, that looked kind of cool. Yeah, that looked fun. <laughs> yeah. A Jason Sudeikis, Anne Hathaway, dark comedy monster movie. Like, hey, okay. all right. <laughs> what else did we get? We got we got the uh, Lady Macbeth. Um, yeah, Lady Macbeth. Like two Richard Gere movies. Both of them looked good. Uh, the Dinner and uh, uh, Norman. Norman. Um, and then I've never seen this happen before. Like uh, where? Uh, oh, <laughs> by the way, just just one more trailer, please. <laughs> yeah, like you know how when you go to a movie and like it shows the trailers, and then it'll show like the uh, theater logo, like uh, the equivalent of your feature presentation is about to begin. Um, AMC's got that, where it's got the like, thanks for watching. Now on with the movie or whatever. If only it still played funky fanfare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or those weird dot people it used to do. <laughs> and then it'll show like a thing about like they're putting a soda into a rocket launcher and it shoots into space. That same thing they've been showing for ten years. <laughs> but then no, like then then it, it, we got another trailer. And then it's just like it's like now enjoy your movie. It's like this trailer has been approved for like what? <laughs> I was confused. For I, I thought it was going to be one of those weird things where they like show you the trailer for the movie before it starts. Like I've had that happen a couple well, times. Since we didn't see a trailer for this movie, I was like, is this also like maybe like have some quirkiness to it? Like it's going to start with like a fake trailer or something, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, because again, we have no idea what yeah. the tone was going to be walking into this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, the trailer it showed looked really good. It was like, it's uh, Liv Schreiber, and he plays the inspiration for Rocky. Um, I don't remember what it was called, but... I Fuck me, I, I can't remember. I hope that comes to Springfield. I, I like how the whole thing looked like it was shot on a, like a Super 8. Yeah, like, yeah. Even, like the trailer was all grainy. I'm like, is this out of focus? And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, they they made a choice and they went with it. I'm down, man. <laughs> they have someone playing Stallone in the movie. It, 
I really want to see that. I hope most of these movies come to Springfield. Like, <laughs> it's like, it's like when Dave and I go see the Pure Flix movies, honestly, at those movies too, we get trailers for stuff we don't get in front of other movies. <laughs> <laughs> Although the sad thing is, is I'm sure most of the trailers in front of the Pure Flix movies probably will come here. <laughs> oh yeah. Gotta love that Bible Belt. <laughs> Sometimes. It is kind of a crapshoot. <laughs> like, we didn't get I'm Not Ashamed, and we didn't get Slamma Jamma. Boo. Yeah. <laughs> What's the fuck is even the point of doing this anymore? We exactly. Couldn't, we couldn't do it for Slamma Jamma. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't see Slamma Jamma on the big screen. Time to hang it up. God damn Had it. Had a good run. <laughs> oh, there she is as a girl card. <laughs> <laughs> It would be weird if she was just walking out with, like, a bag of money. <laughs> like, she's robbed the place. Like, it's her last day she robbed the place. <laughs> Big dollar signs on the end of it. Just come out like, oh, hey, you guys are the guys from earlier. So, uh, want to buy some heroin? <laughs> Why don't you ask us that <laughs> after I turn the camera off? Yeah. Wasn't it during the Godzilla midnight screenings when the guys came up to us and asked us, like, if we wanted to buy weed from them? God, yeah, I think that was that. I think it is. I think that might be at the very end of that <laughs> review. I, th I think I put it on there as like a stinger. <laughs> I think. Fuck, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, I think it was... I'm fairly positive it was Godzilla. <laughs> I know it was a summer movie because we had the windows down and that's why they came up. <laughs> Can't you see? We're busy. We're talking to a camera on our dashboard. <laughs> Duh. We're filming our own episode of Taxi Cab Confessions. <laughs> I confess, I saw Godzilla. <laughs> what? <laughs> now watch me jerk off. <laughs> ah, there it is. I was going to say, like, like this ran out of risque shit back in the 90s. Uh, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to Real Sex 19. Just rubbing nipples for an hour. <laughs> and now we go to Rio de Janeiro. <laughs> Lame sex. <laughs> uh, if this is still playing anywhere around you which if you live if you live in a big city it probably is yeah um, or if you have uh, yeah like somewhere that has like like an art house better chance than I'm, I'm honestly surprised like that it came here i mean just considering like how I it know. is like uh like i said like i i loved this movie so but, did i but yeah it, it's one of those things like you watch it and you get out here and it's like it's like there's no reason that came to springfield Springfield is a crapshoot, like we've always said. Like, honestly, that's even, that's the case with the Pure Flix movies, and that's the case with, like, indie movies like this. It, it might come here. <laughs> it might not. <laughs> like, you won't know until, like, a day before it gets here. Because if you go to, like, the AMC website or Fandango or one of those sites, like, they, they will not have this theater updated until like the Wednesday before the new movies come out. So we get a lot of Bollywood movies here. Yeah. Oh, uh, over here at Parkway. <laughs> yeah. They show a lot of Bollywood films here, but I don't have 18 hours to kill. So I know <laughs> every time I'm like, okay, maybe I'll see I was, that. It's I was going to say that's unfair to say, but I'm like, every Bollywood movie I've seen has an intermission. So, yeah, <laughs> So I, I can't really can't really say that that's not accurate. <laughs> I think there's one playing in there now. It probably started at four o'clock this morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, uh, They're just playing an entire season of Twenty Four. <laughs> I think there isn't there like a. Like a like a Bollywood twenty four, and it's got like not like I'm as not a movie. I mean, there, like a, I'm not gonna say there's not. I think there is. I think there is like a <laughs> like an Bolli Indian all Bolli the Bollywood remakes we've seen of everything else. I'm not gonna say there's not that. <laughs> I'm pretty like I I I'm fairly certain I saw a trailer for it once. It might have had the same guy in it. It was in the final season. It was the that politician or whatever. I can't fucking remember. that was a show. I stayed to the bitter fucking end <laughs> I still haven't seen 24 Legacy I'm waiting for that to end so I can I guess I'll binge watch that I, from what I heard it wasn't terrible I mean it's uh, the, the lead is Corey Hawkins so mm -hmm. I mean he's been good in everything I've seen him in so far what would I have seen him in? Uh, he was uh, 
the black researcher scientist guy in uh, Kong. In Kong? Oh, okay, okay, uh, yeah. He also in uh, in Straight Outta Compton he played uh, Dr. Dre. Oh, I was uh, I was at something else that night. <laughs> You've had plenty of time to go back and rewatch that movie. <laughs> <laughs> It's legitimately no. I, I fuck. there's no reason why I haven't seen that movie. The only reason plus I, you'll love Giamatti in it. Oh yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> it's one I've been like a lot of things. It's like if I oh, miss yeah, it I, in theaters, I, like I, it's, I've got a list as long as my fucking arm yeah. Of things are like it's like and, I need to go back and rewatch this. And like three years on, it's like I still haven't seen this movie. The the only reason I wasn't at it that night was because that movie was like two and a half hours and I was at something else so I couldn't squeeze both of them in. It was actually the same. It was you and Irving at that yeah. movie and that was actually the same reason I asked you guys about The Shack because I was... It was like the same reasoning because that movie was over two hours too and I think I was at... I think Dave and I were at Logan and I couldn't... Yeah. Fit, I couldn't fit both movies in or yeah, something Yeah, because like I remember that. like ours got out like five minutes before yours did or something. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought I was going to be able to squeeze in The Shack only because I... Who the fuck would expect that to be two hours and 20 fucking minutes long? <laughs> I guess it's a really long book. That's no excuse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, I, I don't know. I didn't I didn't see the movie. <laughs> did, did the movie feel like it could have had 40 minutes cut out of it? <laughs> As a start. <laughs> That was hilarious. I watched that when I got home, and I was in I was in bed with Laura, trying not to laugh at fucking just doing Worthington's voice through the review. Just, just whisper things. I don't know. I, God. It was like he was auditioning to like. It's like, well, I mean, this is you know. It's airing opposite, you know, Hugh Jackman's last run as Wolverine. Yeah. I mean, might as well try out here. This is my audition tape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's <laughs> let's see what it'd been like if Clint Eastwood was in heaven. Is for real. <laughs> um, I if you find a theater where this is at, I, I highly recommend seeing this in the theater. Um, oh yeah, it's 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 fucking definitely worth it. Mm -hmm. um, it's an IFC film, so I'm assuming at some point, you know, I, I don't know what their what their turnaround time is for releases as far as like mm -hmm. stuff airing on like their their movie channel or anything. Oh hell, honestly, if this is an IFC film, it might be like on demand right now. Uh, yeah, and that, that's a fair <laughs> point too. Is like like I, I know like sometimes they're they're at the same time. Sometimes there's yeah. a little bit of a delay. I like I know it's not usually like the the standard like three month grace period nah. thing, but. But yeah, it's it's definitely worth checking out if you get a chance to. It's uh, it's an interesting sit. It's it's yeah. it's a it's a slow burn, but it it definitely it fucking earns that slow burn, man. Yeah, it it <laughs> everything kind of builds to a point, yeah. but it keeps I don't know. It, it keeps a nice sense of unease, even when it's not like tense or stressful. Even just like just scenes where she's doing her normal day-to-day -day stuff, actually just being a personal shopper. That stuff was fascinating, too. Like, it's just, there's always this general sense of mm -hmm. unease with all of it. Yeah, there is, because either it's just that well-made and that well-acted, and you're kind of interested in this world that they've built up, or you just simply don't know if someone's in the background watching her. <laughs> yeah. <it's> <laughs> constantly not knowing. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's the thing, is it's that, that constant not knowing what's mm -hmm. happening or what's going to happen that really kind of propels it forward in a, in a, in a really, really cool way. So, yeah, it, no, it, it definitely, if, if you get a chance to, to check it yeah. out, fucking go for yeah, it. Yeah, go go uh, see it's, it. It's not going to be for everybody, but... No. Um, <clears throat> no, if your favorite horror movie last year was The Darkness, you're not going to like this. <laughs> <laughs> if your favorite horror movie last year was The Darkness, I weep. <laughs> That was terrible. <laughs> you just weep and shake like poor Kristen Stewart in this film. <laughs> what? <laughs> Where she was just gonna nibble the end of her thumb off. Yeah. Um. So it, yeah, I, I highly recommend seeing this in the theater. So I'll be back tomorrow with um, Smurfs: The Lost Village. <laughs> I'll 
fun. I won't be. <laughs> I'll be doing something else with my time. Watching The Shack again. Yes. Now that you've read clearly. the book. <laughs> See ya.